Hey friends, Ash here with Gin Sense, and I'm back with another week in fragrance. It's technically been like two and a half weeks since I've done this, but really there haven't been a lot of big name releases that have been announced over the past couple of weeks, so you haven't missed much. In this video, I have new releases from Ralph Lauren, Tom Ford, Terry Mugler, and more. So let's just go ahead and jump right into this. First off, let's talk about a new Ralph Lauren fragrance. It is Ralph Lauren Polo Red Remix. Ralph Lauren has launched Polo Red Remix, a new limited edition flanker to 2013's Polo Red. Polo Red Remix follows 2018's Polo Red Rush. From the brand, a new spin on Polo Red with electrifying freshness and amplified woody notes create a sensual limited edition fragrance. Polo Red drops a new spin on its original scent with the limited edition Ansel Elgort Remix. Did I pronounce that correctly? I don't know. The fragrance captures the energy of a bass pumping dance club with notes of mandarin, saffron, and ambery woods. Additional notes include cranberry, which is par for the course for the red fragrances in this line, cardamom, clary sage, geranium, coffee, roasted tonka bean, and patchouli. The Ralph Lauren Polo fragrances have lots and lots of flankers, so it's not a big surprise to see another one, especially a red flanker, because there are many, many red flankers currently available in that polo line. This one is apparently going to capture the energy of a bass pumping dance club, so I imagine this is gonna have a really brisk and fresh opening, but I, I could be wrong. I mean, that's just a write up. This is already available online, so it was basically announced at the same time that it became available at stores. So if you're interested in this fragrance, you can go online right now and order it, and honestly, you could probably go into your local Belk or Macy's or whatever, and the fragrance is gonna be available there. Next up, a new Tom Ford private blend. This one is called Soleil Neige, and I believe that reviews on this one have started to pop up on YouTube, even though it was announced not very long ago. This is a new unisex fresh citrus fragrance in the Tom Ford private blend collection. From the house, the bright opening of bergamot and carrot seed mirrors the winter light. The cool reflection of the sun transforming everything in sight to a blanket of glacial white. The floral heart looks to the iridescent sky, blooming with pale petal shades of ivory and rose. The fresh green petals of jasmine, addictive orange flower, and the transparent white floral sea of Carmaflor Captive blends white blooms with the rich warmth of Turkish rose. The dry down melts onto skin with the wood and honey undertones of cystus labdanum and skin gripping musk as the resinous dimension of benzoin and creamy vanilla finish with sun-kissed warmth. Soleil Neige is the bright side of Soleil, a polar expression to Soleil Blanc's solar floral. Radiant with winter light, the scent mimics the shimmer of sun on snow. I don't want to slag this fragrance before I've smelled it, but I will say that the Private Blend collection to me is not where it used to be. So if you go back in time when they were first releasing the Private Blend and then most of the fragrances that came in the early years of the Private Blend collection seemed like almost every one of those was a killer. And most of the fragrances in the Private Blend collection that people love most are from those earlier years. Over the past few years, a lot of the fragrances in the Private Blend collection have been kind of forgettable to me. I know that they've had some hits like Effing Fabulous. A lot of people really like that. I mean. It had a lot of detractors too, but it made some noise. And then Lost Cherry made a little bit of noise as well, though not as quite as much as the effing fabulous. I don't want YouTube to come after me for saying the F word. <laughs> so yeah, there we go, a new Tom Ford private blend. Next up, let's talk about a Tresardi fragrance. It's Tresardi Womo, but this is a special edition as part of the Levriero collection. Levriero. There's technically going to be two fragrances here. There's gonna be Tresardi Donna for women and Tresardi Womo for men. I'm just going to talk about Womo here because basically 96% of my viewership are men. This fragrance is based on a classic Fougere Accord that has undergone revisions to make the perfume modern, elegant, and very sexy. In the start of the fragrance, you can feel the freshness of balanced citrus notes with a warm and spicy touch of nutmeg. The presence of geranium wrapped in green notes makes the olfactory bouquet decided with a vibrant trail that remains in the memory. The base welcomes us with a full-bodied and sensual mix of woods enhanced by the patchouli accord. And the bottle reminds me just slightly of the Penhaligon's portrait collection bottles because of the cap that it's got on there. 
I could be completely wrong, and maybe it's just because of the picture size, it is quite small, but it looks a little bit like a duck. This fragrance has top notes of Italian lemon, bergamot, galbanum, and nutmeg, a mid of geranium, violet leaves, and muscatel grass, and then a base of leather, sandalwood, musk, patchouli, and akigala wood. Next up, let's talk about two new Azaro fragrances. One of these is Azaro Porom Wild Mint, and the other is Azaro Porom Ginger Lover which is a great name if you're dating or married to somebody with red hair. First off, let's talk about Wild Mint. Azaro Porum Wild Mint is a fresh, aromatic, and engaging cocktail that begins with the bergamot notes enriched with the nuances of calypsone, an olfactory instrument of synthetic origins created at the laboratories of Givadon. That almost sounds like a science fiction write-up. An olfactory instrument of synthetic origins. It's an aroma chemical. Calypsone adds a fresh and fruity touch to the composition. Sparkling and round, the bouquet develops with a mix of balsamic accords decorated with peppermint. Towards the base, deep patchouli tones are mixed with an intoxicating vetiver. So the full breakdown of notes here, in the top, bergamot and calypsone. In the mid, fir balsam, absolute pine, and peppermint. In the base, patchouli and vetiver. Now let's talk about that ginger lover. Azaro Porom Ginger Lover is an olfactory variation on the theme of the East. In the composition, there are many spicy notes that melt on the skin, forming a warm and sweet, sensual and exciting aura. The spicy tones perfectly match the vetiver accord, which gives just the right depth and enhances the intensity of the olfactory passages. This one has a top of lime and cardamom, mid of ginger and cedar, and a base of coumarin and vetiver. So which of those two is more interesting to you? Wild Mint or Ginger Lover? I definitely give the name advantage to Ginger Lover. Next up, what is probably the biggest release of this bunch, it is the new Terry Mugler fragrance, Amen Ultimate. It's been a while since we've had a new fragrance in the Amen line. Crypto Mint was the last one before this one. Uh, they kind of took a hiatus and did the Alien fragrances, Alien Man, Alien Man Fusion, and now they're going back into Amen. Mugler launches a new limited edition, the men's fragrance, Amen Ultimate. The expression of an inner strength that pulsates with the sensual magnetic masculinity. Amen Ultimate by Mugler. Amen. Mugler's first men's fragrance launched in 1996 revolutionizing the world of men's perfumes by combining sweet and intense aromas based on a fantasy universe. Inspired by the universe of superheroes found in comic books, Amen embodies masculinity defined by extraordinary virtues and physical prowess. Amen Ultimate is supposed to transform the original fragrance, make it a new, fresher, smoother, and more sensual version. From the house, Amen Ultimate is made for modern superheroes, for men who possess the physical and mental strength to create a new, more sensual form of masculinity. It's more than power, it's an attitude. More than strength, it's his signature. Somewhere between boldness and refinement. Each day brings with it a brand new adventure. Amen Ultimate offers surprises that are expressed in two dimensions. The sheer intensity of the original is first enhanced by the freshness of bergamot, which works against the dry woody cedar note. Then comes the gourmand note of mochaccino coffee, powerful and sensual. The base contains fir balsam. The scent is modern, lively, and woody. So there we have it, the new Amen, Amen Ultimate. What do you guys think about this? You gotta let me know, because I know that some people are definitely thinking this is gonna be a bomb in a bad way. I guess there's really not that many good ways to bomb, but still. We're gonna wrap this up with two niche fragrances. First off, Juliet Has a Gun, Not a Perfume, Super Dose. So the original Juliet Has a Gun, Not a Perfume is very much in line with what Eccentric Molecules does. So it's very much in line with Eccentric Molecules, Molecule O2, which is another fragrance that's basically in Broxton. So now they've gone and made Super Dose. From the house, if you think back to the 2010 edition of Juliet Has a Gun, Not a Perfume, which is characterized by a fine, woody, fresh, and pure aroma with a clean paper effect, you may remember that this scent did not suit everyone and did not smell at all 
to some people. This first minimalist and clean edition was a composition based on the Cetalox molecule and described as a provocative declaration that does not follow the rules of modern perfumery. It was created to be able to combine with other Juliet Has a Gun fragrances in a layering effect, but also to wear on its own. For those who felt the first scent did not give enough effect, strength, and trail, there is a new version called Superdose. Not a perfume Superdose will offer an overdose of Cetalox from Ferminich, which shows off the amber and woody aspects of the fragrance in a very elegant way. So essentially they're taking the Cetalox from the original and just bumping it up. Which makes sense, the name is Superdose. As Ferminich describes, Cetalox gives rich, elegant effects to all areas of perfumery, from sheer florals to modern orientals. Enhanced richness, warmth, and depth can be achieved at lower dosages, while at higher levels, it provides exceptional substantivity and performance. Always looking for innovative ways to shake the perfumery's world, we came up with an intense version of Not A Perfume. Not A Perfume Superdose. Same, but overdosed. Because if there is one thing that shouts out innovativeness to me, it's taking a fragrance that is based off of a single molecule and then upping the amount of that molecule in the fragrance. If that is not innovative, I don't know what is. I can see everyone at Eccentric Molecules right now. They're looking at Molecule 01 and they're like, this has Isogamma Super in it. What can we do to make a new innovative version of Molecule 01? From across the room, somebody shouts out, I know what to do. Take the amount of Isogamma Super in the fragrance and increase the amount of Isogamma Super in the fragrance. Immediately, everybody starts clapping. Oh my God, you're a genius. Innovation. Last up, a fragrance from the House of Parfums de Nicolai. They have launched the fragrance Baikal Leather Intense, which is a new woody spicy leather fragrance. The leather aspect of Baikal Leather Intense is essentially created by blending two dry woody notes, essence of Gaiac wood and essence of smoked pine, which sounds good to me. This powerful duet is revealed by a fiery start of spicy citrus with yuzu, pepper, and saffron, while the aromatic touch of spearmint completes the top note. The floral heart of rose and violet envelops the leather, softened by an iris butter, tonka beans, and white musk background. Additional notes include sandalwood and vetiver. I own a few fragrances from the house. I do like them, and one thing that I enjoy about the house is that they make their fragrances available in 30 milliliter bottle size. So if you don't want a sample, but you don't want a full size 100 ml bottle, you can get a little 30 ml and those should last you for a good amount of time. The fragrances I have from the house have really good performance. And that is gonna wrap it up for this week in fragrance. Technically two weeks, but who cares? Not too many huge announcements, but still some fun stuff coming out. Let me know in the comments which of these fragrances you're most interested in. I would imagine most of you probably gonna lean toward that Mugler. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you all again next time with another fragrance video. See you guys.